And uh, we'll try to get out of here quickly so everybody can get home before we get to the next one. But I, since we have a small group here, I'd just like to quickly go around the room and have you introduce yourself and your alliance or association or business or whatever the case. And raise your hand if you have not signed in. We want to make sure that we have everybody. Great to see you, Wade. Everybody signed in? <laughs> All righty. So um, let's just start right here. Yeah, Brandon Thurston, principal of Aztec High School. Steve Isabella, City of Aztec. Jeff Blackburn, City Manager for the City of Aztec. Brian Paul, resident. Krista Chapman, resident. Dave Porter, hiker. What was that? Hiker. Hiker. Doug Veperino, EDAP. Uh, Corey Gropp, the new CT Director for Aztec Municipal Schools. Chris Smith, the Mexico State Parks. Okay, back there. Jerry Williams, IT. Okay, right here. Mike Padilla, Mayor of Aztec. Mayor of Aztec. Bob Gregorio, citizen. William Farmer, Aztec Adventures. Um, right there, this gentleman, you are? Wade Anderson, Barefoot Bikes. Over here? Here I am, Penny Dell from Once a Day Marketing, Jim's partner. And Jim Glover with Once a Day Marketing. And we want to really thank you for being here. And then also we have people out on the on, online. So is there a way to... Um, if they just, uh, you can just ask them. And okay, ask so why don't you introduce yourself, Catherine, first? Okay, I'm Catherine from Aztec Schools, um, and I've been with Aztec Schools for about going on nine years. Okay, thank you. Um, good. Neil? Neil Hanna with Aztec Adventures. Okay, Will's partner over there. And Michael? Good evening, everyone. Michael Sage with the Northwest New Mexico Council of Governments. How cool is this? This is nice that we have the hybrid of people that can't make it and Thank you back there. Yes, sir. Um, we, he has a new nickname, POM Peace of Mind. By having him here in the room, we know that everything's working really well. So <laughs> thank yeah. you for that. So we're going to um, talk a little bit about what's going on with the what we call the Aztec Outdoors Project. 
and it really is an initiative to build the outdoor recreation economy. And we've talked in the past, there's two sides of the economy. There's the experiential side to the economy, getting out, building the infrastructure, people having fun, and then there's the economic development side that people like John over there is interested in. How do we create more jobs and careers centered around outdoor recreation? And not just tour operators and guides and outfitters, but gear manufacturers. And I cite the example of Cortez and Steve Bolton Springs. If you've heard of Osprey Backpacks, one of the largest manufacturers of backpacks in the United States, came out of Cortez. Population? Dolores. Actually, Dolores. Actually, Dolores. 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 Okay, so in the neighborhood. Population right? 800? Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then um, Smart Wool out of Steamboat Springs. Both of them now are multi-billion dollar companies. So it has nothing to do with the size of the community where these ideas can spring from. It has to be uh, the cultural is there. The culture is there for people to understand, for the, for the youth and the people in the community to understand that they can start that community and the support system is there. Um, we're going to wait for this woman to sign in. Introduce yourself if you don't mind. I'm Janice Krish. I'm at San Juan College with the Enterprise Center. All right. Have a seat, yeah. Janice. Thank you for joining yeah. us tonight. Um, Want to thank uh, Aztec, City of Aztec, for um, this initiative as well as the Northwest New Mexico Council of Governments. If you haven't heard of them, they're a great organization. They, even though the name is Council of Governments, they're not a governmental agency. They have funds from federal and state, and they use that to help advance economies in the state of New Mexico. And so this is a project that they're helping funding. That's how we are on board with this project. And so the strategic question that we like to ask, we sort of pose this question for every meeting is, what does Aztec need to do to build a thriving outdoor recreation economy? And we're slowly getting there. Things are happening so that we will eventually be there. Um, and it's exciting to see because right now there's, we're at the tipping point of building outdoor recreation economies throughout the whole state of New Mexico. And there's also at the moment, at the Roundhouse, $100 million being earmarked to build outdoor recreation and conservation in the state of New Mexico, a permanent fund that will be there every year with the goal to advance that fund to $350 million. So state parks and, and the state land office and Game and Fish, they know that every year they're going to have a amount of money coming in for them to be able to do what it is they need to do to make sure that their departments and divisions um, can cater to the needs of outdoor recreation enthusiasts in the state of New Mexico. Now I'm not advancing. Oh, did it stop advancing? Oh, I'm not. Hold on. <laughs> Hang on one second. We have a technical difficulty, but Palm is here. That's why he's here. <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. Yes, Let's sir. see if it works. Oh, good, we will. All right, so tonight we did the introduction, so that's very cool. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of news coming up next. Then we're going to be actually looking at some um, work that the COG has been doing related to what we're just sort of generally referring to as the Aztec Outdoors Commerce Area, so you'll be learning about that. We're gonna revisit the visioning that we did at the last Zoom meeting, and we're gonna share with you a sort of an overarching vision of advancing outdoor recreation economy here. We're going to go over the toolkit, which we did the last time we were together here, and then we're going to talk about next meeting and the journey. So that will be our agenda for tonight. I think we'll get a lot done. So any news that anybody wants to share here in the room first, I know there's going to be news from some of the people online. Anybody want to share any news related to outdoor recreation in any shape, fashion, or form in the, in the region, in the area, anything you want to share? I'm happy to share, Jim. All righty, let's go from there. We're, go ahead. We're going to... We can hear you. Okay. Um, just some exciting things happening just in the school district. Um, the NICA team that was um, launched by Robert Henderson, I don't think he's present there tonight. Um, they're going to be getting training um, the week after spring break. Um, training for, they're going to be involved in four different races um, coming up this beginning in July. Um, Project Bike Tech continues to go strong. We had 20 bikes donated from the Farmington PD that they'll be using for parts and rebuilds and also use them um, even as, as actual bikes that they'll be used by students. Um, we did a survey recently and um, there was a really strong interest next year in our students rolling into the Bike Tech class. We had between the ninth and 12th graders, um, about 50 students interested in getting into that specific class. Um, so that was pretty exciting. The other thing that we have is one of our district um, administrators wrote for a grant with YCC 
and we have 21 students that are going to be building um, uh, flower beds and doing some other gardening around all the schools in the district over spring break and in June um, just to uh, make the district more um, visually pleasing uh, and that will be those will be paid positions for those 21 students spring break and the month of June and then we have our outdoor recreation mentorship starting um, and that's been in a combination with Jim um, and includes Earl from Jack's Plastic and Neil and Aztec Ruins. Um, I'm looking at my list here. Denise Robertson from Aztec Ruins, Jacob Mendel from Southwest Conservation um, Corps, and um, David and Zach from Durango River Trippers. So they'll be doing a outdoor recreation mentorship with about 15 of our students. Um, they'll do that virtually, but then we'll also have our students getting out and exploring the outdoors. And then finally, we have Jacob from Southwest Conservation coming tomorrow to speak about um, some opportunities in the four quarters, and we'll have about 100 students um, present to hear about those opportunities. Thank you for that, Catherine. That's very cool. I mean, that's just one person talking about the things that are going on, for instance, at the high school. And when you take all of those things and start adding them up, those are those baby steps that really help advance everything. Also want to let you know that um, Endeavor, New Mexico, along with the Outdoor Recreation Division from the State Office, and Cottonwood Gulch Expeditions and Environmental Education in New Mexico is, is putting on the first ever Outdoor Recreation Day at the Roundhouse, March 7th. And so it'll be our opportunity to really share with our legislators and thank the legislators for what they've been doing. They are giving, besides that 100 million we just talked about, 10 million to the Outdoor Recreation Division. Again, 7 million for Trails Plus Grants program, so communities can step up and get money to help build that infrastructure. And $3 million earmarked for um, the Outdoor Equity Fund to get underserved kids outdoors and, and transforming their lives. So again, so much is going on. And also, at the opportunity, yes? Is there still time for people to sign up to exhibit? Oh yes, there is still time. If you're interested in exhibiting, the cost is zero dollars. Um, all of the space inside the roundhouse is taken, so it's only um, exterior spaces are available, but if you want to exhibit, we can help you get that link. In fact, we can just send it out. We'll just send it out to everybody that attended, and, and if you're interested, you can sign up and, and be part of uh, Outdoor Recreation Day. So um, I was trying to remember what else I was going, but anyway. So any questions on that? All right. All righty. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to um, um, visit the um, Aztec Outdoors Commerce Area and the map that has been created by the Council of Governments. And Michael Sage is going to drive that initiative, so hang on a second. There is the map. So Michael, everybody can see the map here in the room, so you want to explain what they're looking at. Yes. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Glad to be with you, albeit electronically. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the work the Council of Governments has done with respect to uh, the proposed development. Uh, the Council of Governments is an association of local governments, including the city of Aztec. We've been in the region for over 50 years. We have a dual designation. On one hand, we are a community and a planning uh, district. We work with local communities such as uh, land use planning, transportation planning, and on the other end, we also are an economic development district, so we do a little bit of economic development. So with this project, we're kind of bringing both hats to the table. We were brought in uh, in consultation with the city of Aztec to look at and help lead uh, a capital alley appropriation designed to uh, push and help uh, create a, uh, an outdoor recreation economy in Aztec. So what we did is we kind of identified a potential site here. What you're looking at is approximately 50 acres here. And what we did is we tried to support uh, community goals such as trail support investments in trails, support investment that's going along the downtown area, support investment that has been made in North Maine, and continue to support uh, investments in local parks, right? So with this 50 acre footprint, what we did is we decided not to fight um, the floodplain we decided not to fight the topography. And so within this 50 acre footprint, over the majority of it is in the floodplain. So here, coming down here all along the river is basically in the floodplain. 
approximately 27 acres, right? You have a little section here, two acres, that is out of the floodplain, and this section here, approximately 20 acres, that is out of the floodplain. So what we did is, once again, like I said, we tried not to fight the floodplain. We just looked to, uh, like I said, support community goals. And so what we did then is kind of look at the existing bridge network that Aztec Ruins has here, down at Riverside Park. And so with that, we tried to improve connectivity. So we just threw this down just uh, for community conversation state, uh, proposed development of new bridges, right? Pedestrian bridges that would improve accessibility down in the river. So we had one bridge, a secondary bridge, and a third bridge. The, the, the bridge here would lend itself to the church that is here, but also tie in with A and W, would tie in with the pedestrian T that is right here, would be able to provide accessibility to the to the Animus River, right? You can be able to bring your A&W float down here, be able to hang out and then go back across, right? Conversely, we also looked at a bridge here that would be able to tie in to the RV park. This is approximately six acres, right? So it's a little bigger footprint. And what I did is with this line here, once again, I tried not to fight looking at Google Earth, Google Maps, kind of torn the area. This is where the, the vegetation and the trees kind of naturally open up, right? And here you have a lot of the existing tree network. So six acres here, we could do something with outdoor recreation. We can look to improve accessibility to the river. We can look to do some outdoor recreation infrastructure development piece here. The site will lend itself well. This piece here, we, you know, once again, just went it out there. We said, let's leave it. Let's see if we can just increase the accessibility, perhaps open trail space, biking, et cetera. Right. And so with the six acres here, with the accessibility to river, talking with people, one of the things that we constantly heard was the, was the desire for additional put-ins and additional pull-outs, right? To be able to get into the river and be able to get out of the river. So the, the thought here was that this could serve as a launching point. You would be able to come down the river, be able to get off on Riverside Park, and then have a shuttle that would be able to bring you back in, right? And so once again, kind of looking at the business side of it, we kind of identified the 20 acres here that could be proposed for vertical development, whether that be business, outdoor recreation, hospitality, etc. And just because of the floodplain, it really limits the 20 acres here. We're going to have to be creative in terms of how we want to use the space, right? In terms of both layout, uh, just in terms of overall infrastructure. And what I try to do, just the conversation starter, uh, once again, I'm not a transportation planner, but I just threw down some preliminary road networks to give you a visualization of what it could look like, right? Once again, we brought North Ash in to the park. We were trying to create connectivity to the six acre footprint that we had here. Once again, this is just preliminary, but we wanted to tie in with North Main. We wanted to tie in with the new sidewalk development that's here. We had proposed extending that pedestrian corridor along Aztec Boulevard here to be able to tie in to, to this river point here. So you would have a river point, pedestrian walkway that would tie into this piece here. And then lastly, we did have a couple of red dots here and here. The thought is that if we could put in a public facility, restrooms, bathrooms here, it would then allow us to bring additional infrastructure, whether that's water, whether that's electric, down into these corridors to help expand infrastructure accessibility in these areas down here. Right, and so that's kind of what we were thinking. Their overall thought was to not fight the floodplain. Oh, lastly, I just want to mention this line here. This is the uh, 20 foot contour line. So the topography of the site is relatively flat. However, you do, you know, the, the contour of the area has a little curve in there, right? And so as we look to develop, this could potentially become, you know, prime real estate ability to overlook the outdoor recreation area to be able to then uh, look into the river. Uh, and so that's kind of what we had, very high level, very quick, Jim, um, ready to stand for any questions, any yeah. feedback. Thank you for that, Michael. Allison, Stephen, is there anything you want to add to, the, to this? Um, 
So the one thing I want to add, first of all, thank you, Michael. Uh, have you a look want, at this. You want the Zapper by chance? To point sure. Anything? Sure. Thank you. So, um, you know, just by happenstance, I think Michael had visited the city of Aztec last month. We actually toured this property, uh, toured North Main, seen how, how it could tie in. Um, of course, we have the existing pedestrian bridges right here, um, but I think with the addition, that adds a little bit more connectivity. Of course, this is the spot right here where you can actually have development and not not uh, have any issues with the floodplain. And that, you know, anytime you're you're developing the floodplain, it's expensive, it's costly, it's almost non, it's a non-starter. Um, here, right right now, deep by the river, um, of course. What, what uh, Michael and, and Mia talked about is this would be a great area for a trail network, very similar to what we have on Riverside. So what the city of Aztec ultimately can do is start having that connectivity. So we have the ruins, potentially you can go all along the river, all along Riverside, hopefully down to Townsend, which is over here, just making that connection, making that loop, very similar to what the city of Durango, city of Farmington have done in their, their river system. Um, and then, of course, getting it tied back to economic development within these spots right here and then right here within our North Main area. So then hopefully we can bring the built environment and the natural environment together, not have any conflicts, and then that will, will give the opportunity for job growth, but also for individuals to just take advantage of this area, come visit, come play, and so forth. I was just curious, the uh, farming at Aztec Trail, where does that come into town here? Is it anywhere close to this? So. There's going to be two tie-ins. Um, it's actually going to get connected to Hartman Park. Okay. So technically, um, you can actually go into Hartman and then go into Riverside. There's mm -hmm. one avenue, and then the other aspect of it is tying back into uh, North North Rio. I'm uh, sorry, South Rio Grande, um, which is by the post office, and so that's another tie-in. So you can tie into downtown Main Avenue and then uh, through Hartman. Okay. And they all lead back to the same spot. All right, let's open it up to questions to so either Stephen and or uh, Michael. Just maybe address who you'd like to open the, the question to or just general. This is Dave. Uh, you know, I was with both ATOS and the Planning and Zoning Committee for the city. We tried to extend the trail um, out of Riverside underneath uh, Aztec Boulevard and that red zone where it says Ruins Road RV Park. Um, back in the flooding that occurred in the 1920s, there are place, pieces of property that extend onto the opposite sides of the river, which makes it a real jumble for who owns what where. Yeah. Ed Kotick has the map, um, so he's got this stuff. He, we drew it all up back in probably 07 and tried to get this done on the owners that were along there. Even though it was along the river, not even near their property, they refused. So, so to, to try to make, try to just this right here, yes, is privately owned right by this this area right here. This what we found out is actually owned by nobody. So nobody actually owns it, and the assessor has no record of paying taxes. So it would be a great spot to take advantage of ownership. Right, so when we looked at the maps, right. there was actual property lines that were on that side. Like I said, Ed has it. So unless it's changed, ask him. Yeah, no, we, we looked at this recently. Okay. We've been looking at it for the last couple of years. And so there is no ownership right here at all. In fact, that's okay. been verified with the assessor's office. All right. And yeah, it wasn't before. Okay, very cool. Anybody else have a question about this? What do they think? Yeah, go. go ahead. Stephen, would this area be uh, useful for like a boat launch ramp area into that area? Like uh, something that you could, my, just looking at the map from here, it seems like. The, the North Main extension could come down. There could, there's an area that reaches the river there near the bridge. Uh, could, could there be like a place to put in uh, like a dry boat ramp for like they had in Durango, some of that, and then maybe another area near Williams Arroyo over there? Yeah, is there? I, I can let the city manager talk about because he's done some work with the, the ramps already. So, yeah. Well, um, So right here we do have a ramp. It's an it's an ingress egress. So it's not technically a ramp, but you can come in here on, on Martinez Lane and you can drive down here, then you can make this turn and you can take your raft off of your vehicle and then walk it down to the river right here. Gotcha. And then you can come back and park right here. And then Riverside has always had 
or for as long as I can remember, back to the 80s, we designated this area, and there's still signage right here, um, I think right there, that we've called a raft ramp there as well. Is it just below the diversion? Yeah, and I believe so, it's just below the diversion, and I don't recommend that we float over the diversion, but we have just gotten 750,000 to develop this area right here. So we can modify that. So it's a short float, but this would be great for what was being mentioned about for possibly younger people or for people just with a short float to come down here. And then if we had somebody that wanted to get involved in, in doing a return or just people doing it on their own, it's really already set up for us. Um, so that's where we are in that development. And that would be a sort of a unique offering to somebody. Hey, you can just go float for a little while and if you want to keep doing it. So yeah, almost like absolutely. a ride at Disneyland where they get in line over and over and over again. Absolutely. We, that's what we're trying to do. And we hope right here in this point under the bridge with this 750, we're going to be able to clear this out and make this more accessible, more inviting right here. So, And, and then our last piece that we'd like to do is get this diversion dam reconstructed because this is kind of a snag in the river and once that's out that'll be the last barrier all the way from Durango into Farmington on the wow. Animus. Very cool. I was question? wondering my question was that how long is the float? It's short but. Yeah I, I, I don't know the answer Krista from mm -hmm. here to here I'm going to say. 15 more years? Yeah maybe for kid. I mean if you're just lazy floating. How long wait did you say? I said probably 15 or 20 <coughs> <coughs> yeah, but I have no clue. I've never flo I've floated from the diversion to Florida Vista, so that's what I'm basing it off of. <laughs> Something like bathroom facilities. Okay, so we have we have restrooms here okay. in Riverside, of course. You're probably familiar with that. Right. And then with the North Main extension, we have plans in the phase two of that. We'll have restrooms right here. Okay. And then we do have water, power, and sewer. This, this property right here used to be, there was an old house right there, if you, the ones of you that have been here a long time. So we do have the electric, the sewer, and the water all right here as well. And this is just in the early stages too, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of community input and you know what would make this thing. It was just sort of a general vision just to sort of get everybody ex sort of excited about what might be coming. Yeah, but my question is, if I, if I may, is right here, do we have, our, have we contacted the owners? Are we working with these folks? Or are we yes. in a position with these guys? So I'll give an update on that. Um, we've been in the process because they initially had that property, that 20 acres for sale uh, over the last two years. And initially they wanted $1.7 million for it. So they had approached uh, the city of Aztec, myself, to see if the city of Aztec would have any interest in purchasing it. And what I had let them know through uh, state procurement law, through DFA, we need to have an appraised uh, value on the property and it actually has to go through a certified appraiser that's recognized by the state. So they are actually in that process right now. In fact, two days ago, uh, Gibson Appraisals contacted me and they were wanting more information about the property. The vast majority of it is in the floodplain and to the detriment of the property owners, that's going to devalue the property significantly just because it's that much more expensive to develop in the floodplain, uh, if, if at all. It has to get FEMA approval, it has to get engineering. And so really, you're only looking at a certain area that can be developed without going to FEMA, and that's at two acres um, just next to the highway. So they are working on it. What will happen at that point, once we get that appraisal, and then the city of Aztec can evaluate if they want to go forward with it, this would be based on what that market value is, not on what necessarily the property owner wants. And then the city could consider if that's something that uh, we'd want to move forward or not at that point. But we need that appraisal first and foremost. Thank you. Okay, back there. Yes. So I've been a citizen of Aztec for about a month now. <laughs> that um, long. And, uh, you got the hat. So I know, I got the hat. I'm, I'm, I'm legit now. Um, I'm just wondering, like, when you guys talk about floating and stuff, my dad's from Idaho. I, you know, like, fly water raft the salmon and the snake. What is, I mean, what is it like, the river? When people float on, is it just like oh. you can tube it? Is it what I mean, what you, pretty much a tube? Yeah. Okay, a tube. All right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, how is that different than the San Juan? Mm. Oh. Okay. I don't know the salmon. It's different than that. <laughs> no, I mean salmon. You got like plus five, plus but, four, yeah. and stuff. But. Yeah. And just so you know that the um, there's a Desert River guy. is a school teacher kid at Vista High School in Farmington. 
couple of seasons ago, he started a rafting company because he came from up in that area. And um, he took the first year 1,200 people down the river. So there's still demand for it, even though it's a different kind of demand. Not, right. It's not your you know, Taos box, Salmon River kind of thing, but it's a family adventure that you can do and have a lot of fun. <coughs> a lot of groups go out where you know, 20 of them might rent multiple rafts and float as a group or whatever. So it's just a slightly different appeal to, a, to somebody. That right. Cool. Well, well, you said Farmington. Well, I just stopped, stopped listening, but um, <laughs> I'm already an Aztec, right? For right. Like that part. <laughs> but no, I was just wondering because it's I'm not a regulated flow it. On, on the animals, it's not regulated flow, which is cool. Right. Like where the San Juan is regulated by the dam of right. Navajo, uh, animus is just what we get. Yeah. yeah. Mountain, You're going to have different what experiences we get after different regular parts. Yeah. Right. Anything else on this before we move on to our next topic? Just real quick, you're probably going to have the best uh, flow this come spring. Come spring. <laughs> 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 it's going to be a six minute trip. Yeah, it's going to be a quick one if you do this. Yes, sir. All righty. So. Let's see if you're going to last nine minutes. <laughs> but again, it's just one more piece of the pie. And it's kind of exciting to see. All right, moving on. So last time we met via Zoom, I think it was the end of January, Marianne, or something like that. Um, we had, had, yes. Mike Clear, just one, one final comment on the plan. If, if there is any comments, can you just please share them with Jim or share them with uh, Steven? And I'll be glad to, uh, to update it. Like I said, this is nothing in stone. Just wanted to have a conversation starter. So glad to incorporate any elements, remove any elements uh, based on community input, community visioning, and whatever comes out. So don't look at this as a final. Just look at this as a conversation starter. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Michael. And I, I asked Michael also, is there any way that we can get a microbrewery with a deck over the river? Because then I think we're, we'd be tripped out perfectly so we could craft and then go up there and have craft That was a plan for the money-saving bridge when they finally close it. Yeah, they, <laughs> what's that? That was a plan for the money-saving bridge when that bridge has to be condemned Yeah. to put a restaurant on it. So, so there's, anyway, I'm sure this is the kind of thinking that has to happen to, to advance that. So uh, again, what is a vision statement? That's what we are working on next for you. Um, uh, declares where you want to be in the future. So it's aspirational, it's kind of forward thinking. And so we got a lot of input. We were looking at people's input last time from five and 10 years out related to the experiential side of outdoor recreation and the job, um, career side of it, the economic side of it. And so we came up with, and this is just a, the initial one, um, that the outdoor recreation economy, and I, I use economy because that encompasses everything. Outdoor recreation may not in, be part of the job side of it, so we wanted to be thinking about the outdoor recreation economy is a top priority of Aztec. It's becoming that. It's not there yet, but how cool would it be if that was what you were known for, is that is a major pro, um, part of Aztec. A community dedicated to serving outdoor recreation businesses, outdoor recreation organizations, and outdoor enthusiasts. So that means your residents and your visitors you're going to be doing everything humanly possible to make the experience or the opportunity to start businesses here as easy as pie. Building extensive OR amenities, we were just talking about that right now, and improving resident health and wellness via outdoor activities. If that was a vision that, that you guys could pursue, then everything you do moving forward would go, oh, how does it align to getting health and wellness? How does it, you know, pickleball? <laughs> That's fun, but it's also health and wellness, using outdoor amenities. Um, how do we cater to the businesses? Like in the mentoring program, she said there's 15 students that are going to be taking the mentoring program and they're going to learn about the possibilities of starting outdoor recreation businesses. So do we have a, a, a support system here so that if they knock on your door and say, I'd like to make the next kind of Osprey backpacks, are you ready and willing and able to help them get that off the ground? Is there seed capital? Is there a place for to do that? Is there a workforce? You know, what can you do to assist them? Or you're recruiting a business from someplace else, California, they want to get the heck out of Dodge and come here. Are you ready to accommodate them? Um, and same thing with organizations. There's a lot of nonprofits, and even Endeavor, our nonprofit, uh, the Outdoor Recreation Business Alliance, is based in Farmington. So why can't there be organizations in this town geared towards the outdoor recreation economy in some way? And then the last one, uh, the middle one, building extensive OR amenities. And that's a priority, and lately there's dollars out there. So as you build these plans, then finally I think there's going to be some money to be able to get some of these things off the ground where maybe in the past it wasn't. And I've cited this example before, 
because we've done it with the film industry. In 2004, the film industry did $40 million with the film production. This last year, they did $855 million with the film production. So it is a big deal, and now I think there's like 22 studios in New Mexico where film production can happen that wasn't before. And so when our state puts its mind behind something like outdoor rec or film industry that they're now doing with outdoor recreation, I think it will begin to take off. We're at that tipping point. And the more community can be really focused in on it and say, hey, this is what everybody wants, the likelihood of securing those funds, I think, goes up dramatically. So any thoughts on, on the visioning statement here? Again, it just proposed. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess, so I work for the city of Farmington in Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs, so with that hat on, like, is this meant to, like, how does that, with their branding, is this differentiating from, I mean, what's Well, this is just a vision of where Aztec wants that? to be. It's not specifically branding or anything. It's just, hey, we're a community dedicated to outdoor recreation, which Farmington is, and there, there's not probably even a difference so, so much because Farmington wants healthy and... Uh, wellness going on with outdoor recreation, and they're putting money in their infrastructure all over the place as well. So it's just making sure this community sees what they want to do, and it, it is somewhat similar. But then from there, where do you go? In this case, it's going to be the Animus River and the, what we just talked about, and everybody has their own thing. And I use the example of Ford, Mustang, Ford one, F-150, and Ford Fiesta. Even though they're all outdoor recreation or Ford, you each have a different setting and thing you're offering. Yeah, no, I totally get that, but I do think Aztec needs to as a resident, <laughs> that needs to differentiate itself. Well, know, one thing, so, yeah. too, if you look at vision, also stands for goals. Mm -hmm. And when I read that, that's goals that, that the city of Aztec is trying to accomplish. Right. So, I mean, you can throw all the vision statements you, you want out there, but if you don't have, I say, proposed goal statement, actually tells us where we want to go. Yeah, and the mission sometimes is, is more the specific of how you're going to <laughs> accomplish your vision. So, it, and it's just a starting point, and we just shared it with the, with the city, so it's just the beginning point. But again, it's a sort of a rallying point for people in the community to go, yeah, that's, you know, we're going to dedicate ourselves to outdoor recreation, we're going to make sure we're healthy and wealthy via outdoors, and we're going to have the infrastructure, and we're going to really support those businesses. Did, were you going to say something? I just had a comment. I was wondering, does this go through council to get like approval of the vision or the you know, I mission? Have, or we're just presenting it. What they do with it, I don't know. So I guess yeah, it would go back to the mayor and the, and the manager. Like, and, where does this go from outside? You know, yeah, our group? I think they'd have to decide what they want to do with it. And, and um, that's a good question, Jeff. Can I take a stab at it, Jim? I mean, I, if, if some of this may be redundant because I've said this in other times, but you know, if you're asking um, how are we dedicated, well, we just showed that we've got property that we're, we're identifying. Mm -hmm. We're showing uh, a partic a plan that was brought by the COG, and it may not be the, the plan, but we do have some planning going on. If you're talking about, you know, um, helping the outdoor business come to Aztec, I mean, you know Stephen, everybody in, in this meeting knows Stephen, and he has been there to help businesses grow. Um, we've been friendly already or, or uh, have worked with a already established outdoor uh, manufacturer that's had success from within Aztec. We've got the schools on board with programming. Um, we've got the college attending tonight with their programming. So we got uh, new bike shops opening yeah, up. We got, yeah, we got business, we've got business owners here. We've got land owners here. We've we got, got state parks here. The okay. mayor of Aztec is here. We have just the dedicated money for the pickleball courts which has gotten mentioned a couple times back and forth I mean we're 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 doing it right? right it's right there for us and I think we have a lot of the tools when you ask what's our vision we, we're putting the tools in place right. that's our vision right now right and then the next thing we're talking about are the, is the action item to even advance the needle more so that's where we're going next so again it was just preliminary it was you guys tossed that out to us we kind of shaped it um, and gave it back to you so anyway um, and there's also a report with it and what we shouldn't mention, or what we didn't mention, is that Marianne took a lot of time looking at all the Aztec plans and the state comprehensive plans and the SEDS, uh, Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy that the COG put together, and the SCORP, the, the Statewide Comprehensive or Outdoor Recreation Plan, whatever. And there, each one of them had recommendations and things that you should be paying attention to. And this sort of aligns with all of that. So in a way, you're basically saying to all those organizations and groups of people that put those plans together, our vision to move outdoor recreation forward in Aztec aligns with what you guys say we should be doing. Yes? Just one more comment. So, yeah, speaking of the comprehensive plan, I was looking at that too, the Aztec comprehensive plan. 
And um, it mentions the um, Aztec Economic Development Advisory Board. That's John. Oh, that's John. Okay, that's what I was wondering, like who might represent there. So <laughs> good to know. So we, yeah. And John, anything okay. you want to add as you see this? And well, I think that uh, we look at it through, through that lens as well as is the economic side of it, that uh, <clears throat> they mentioned quite a bit of stuff already. Stephen just let me know tonight that uh, the city's approved a contract with the uh, uh, entity to do a hotel feasibility study to try to get some marketing done to bring a, a hotel into the downtown area if possible, because we all know that there's going to be places needed to be stayed, you know, for people come and do things of multiple adventures. So we're trying to find the areas to, to fill in. We definitely want that, uh, the brewery with the, you know, the deck and everything we all want, a couple more restaurants, whatever. And that's what we're hoping with the North Main, that's been one of the drivers is the North Main properties down there. The city's done a great job, uh, you know, once they got going on it to, to push to get that done. Uh, and I think that that's one of the, the hopes is, is we can drive some of the growth from that area. If we can get one or two entities in place to start, I think it will uh, do a lot to help. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly and, how we feel. In fact, you have Jack's Classic yes. Welding, which is well, the largest outdoor recreation. We already have our Osprey. We in, already have that. Yeah, in, we just need city. to, and that's one of. The, that's actually what initiated the grant that has got you here. Was our desire to try to find a way to help Jack's stay here and grow at the right. same time, because. For years, they've been constrained by by budget and by yeah, physical capacity, yeah. yeah physical plant that they have there, and so that's that's really for people that don't understand what funded this grant was a five hundred thousand dollar grant from the state of New Mexico to explore uh, outdoor recreational development activity with one of the key elements we were looking at is uh, almost and I don't want to use the word but it's the best way to describe it is a business incubator. <clears throat> but but to help develop those businesses, help those businesses to grow and get get uh, what assets they need brought to them, what education they need brought to them, and help find a way to, to bring that all into one place. So when you you know you're starting a new business in town, we can answer those questions for you because a lot of times people know <coughs> the product, but they may not know the business. You know, and, and we want to try to find a way that uh, we can catch that energy. And then help it expand. Yeah, it's, you know, retention and expansion is a big part of economic yeah. development. So you and have so, a bike shop that opens, then you go to the owner and say, "What can we do to make you even more successful?" And right. he said, "Well, I need this, or can you do this?" And, you, and so if you cater your, you know, to the to your customer. You know, and I know from an, another business end of it is is that his business that is pure outdoor rec is uh, the motocross track. Yeah. You know, and a, a, what they're doing and, out there. And real involved with wanting to help expand that area out there. Again, one of the items that uh, the city's looking at to want to do out there that hadn't been mentioned yet is to try to build an RV or a campsite park because uh, that's a huge part of outdoor rec is people that got all their own stuff. They just need a place to be. Yeah, and yeah. RV, Marion, we just looked at the uh, Bureau of Economic Analysis numbers and it went up a lot. Mm -hmm. RVing is oh, since 2019 to 2021. That over right through the pandemic time. It just yeah, RVing just took off. It was probably the number one growth of all things out there. Yeah. And so that is, that's a big part of what we want to try to find a way is to accommodate. Because again, we have things that can draw people here, but we don't have things to accommodate them to stay here. Right, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And marketing is really good because it works. And so then they show up and then what happens? What's the experience you give them yeah. when they show up? Yeah, you got to have both ends of it to make right. it work right. So, okay. so yeah, so, and, and to keep in mind, anybody that has any interest on the economic side of it, the EDAP meetings or every third Thursday of the month, eight in the morning, and they're open to everybody to come participate and share and help us understand what we can do better. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you. We're going to move on. We've still got a few more things to copy. Uh, to talk about tonight. If you recall, if you were at the last meeting, Outdoor Recreation Roundtable is a national organization, a coalition of all the biggest associations in outdoor recreation. So all the RV manufacturers are members, and all the boat manufacturers are members, and the ski manufacturers are members, and so forth. And they created what was called the Outdoor Recreation Rural Economic Development Toolkit. It had identified 15 best practices of what a community should follow to build a thriving outdoor recreation economy. And when we were here last time, we had an assessment that we all answered. We had 15 um, different best practices questions. And what, what I liked about it was we scored it on a scale of one to five, five being the best on each one of these best practices. 
and the audience typically was lowering the score rather than patting everybody's you know on the back they're like wait a minute that score is probably not as high as we just gave it let's bring it down a little bit if you recall that exercise we went through so what we're trying to do tonight uh, for the rest of our time as you can see like 3.2 identify and empower local champions um, one over there on identify one point of contact only scored one general public support was two and so what I thought we would do tonight is begin using the toolkit assessment as a way to build our action plan so I thought first I'd ask the group based on what you see up there in those scores which one best practice would you like to work the best on and I have each one more in greater definition here rather than just the line that says something. I can read that. For instance, on number, what was the one? Number six, which is the lowest score. Six says, where did number six go? Six is an advantage uh, of more formal partnership under one umbrella is that it creates one point of contact, which is favorable for federal agencies with limited bandwidth for communications and enable state offices and outdoor recreation to support these collaboratives with with facilitated trainings, rural road shows, state federal resource opportunities, and meeting with businesses. Basically saying, if somebody is interested in contacting this community or engaging this community to have a conversation about advancing out their recreation economy, who should that point of contact be? We've already sort of heard Stephen's name, but let's open, maybe we just go with that one, because that was our lowest score. If there's one point of contact that really understands the nuances of the outdoor recreation economy in Aztec, whether they be starting a new business, or whether they want to visit initially, or whatever the case might be, because you can always point them in the right direction. But somebody needs to be that, or, or you um, are seeking a federal grant, or some of this new state money that's going to be available. Who is going to be your point of contact? Open that up for discussion. And Mary Ann is going to be, I have this slide here too, she's got a, a worksheet on all of the best practices to capture your thoughts, but let's just go with number six for right now. Who should that be? Is John? I think it's got to be community development. Everything. I'd say, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm thinking community development is where the point of contact is because he knows all of the nuances of the city, uh, and he's pretty well knowledgeable in all aspects of it, even the outdoor rec, what people like and stuff like that. Yeah. I I go back to community development myself. Is that right there? Who's community development? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. That's, that's Stephen. Stephen. That's yeah. Stephen. So Stephen's community development. Okay, Wade, you had a thought? I was going to say Stephen. Okay. He so, seems to know everything. Yeah, about that guy? Does Stephen have a staff? You guys are wrong. What's that? Does Stephen have a staff? Yes. Yeah, okay. Stephen's the planner. I mean, so I guess speaking from experience, you know, when you have lots of folks coming at you for different questions and wanting a reply, and they probably want it in a timely manner, um, you know, having, he may be the point of contact or his office may be the point of contact, but having a clear direction to funnel folks to that point of contact so it doesn't have to jump through numerous hoops to get to that person and then that person's busy because they have six hats that they have to wear and then it gets jumbled around and then all of a sudden someone's not interested because they didn't get a, a timely reply. So um, Falling you know, through the cracks or whatever the case might be. Yeah, so ensuring that there's a, a solid, I mean, maybe the office is a point of contact and you set up an email where all that comes in and that stuff gets flagged and, and pushed to the appropriate right. So person. a process would need to be developed, like what happens with lead flow? And if you hand it off to somebody, what happened on the handoff and so forth? But I think at least we now have a place to start the conversation build the process. Yes, Jeff? And it's obvious that Stephen is the person and I, as his boss, <laughs> didn't want to be the first one to say it, but he, has a, he, has, he also has an air of bandwidth. So I want to say that Stephen and I are a team okay. that work together, right? And, and I, as his supervisor, and, 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 and want to make sure that everybody understands, yes, we can say Stephen and point at Stephen and make him it, but it is also about my connection and us working okay. together. Okay, and think about this from a branding perspective. You call a community, and you're interested in, I don't know, bringing an outdoor recreation, and, and Jeff goes, yes, I'm the city manager, how may I help you? Mm -hmm. How cool would that be to somebody to go, wow, I'm not talking to, I'm right. talking to the man, right? right? So I think that would really resonate with people coming in, and then of course, the system in place, and where do you send them? It could be the Albuquerque Journal wanting to do a story because they heard about what's going on with outdoor recreation in Aztec, you know, mm -hmm. the, 
there's who knows what's going to happen. Or they, you say, oh, I'm going to have you talk to John. Or you want to talk to a business owner. Or you want to talk to state parks. You know everybody can facilitate that. So I think this is really great. Yeah. And I think that's going to move the number from a one to a three or a four quickly by creating that process of who that one person is. Yes? Is that on the city website? Because if somebody's going to be interested in Aztec, they're going to look at the city of Aztec website. The right. thing it should that's say one of the other bullet points about the, the in, marketing. And yeah. developing a job, contact and have Correct. that right there. I mean, that's the fastest way. You have to make things available right. now. So that, again, would be part of the process. But yes, also making sure from the marketing perspective, another one of the brand or best practices that you, in fact, are educating people about where they should go. Yes? So uh, as somebody that is looking into another city, the first place that I would normally contact would be like their visitors bureau. And I know that we have something similar to that. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be their community economic But that's okay because if everybody in the room knows that that's the person, even if you well, contact them, what if I'm from out of city and I go to an this meeting and I didn't understand that? I'm interested. No, no, but if you call them members in Aztec, who do I contact? If you call the visitors bureau, or our visitors bureau will know that he's the yeah, contact. exactly. But I think that's the that's kind of my would think would be my initial point of contact for a city. Yeah, and, and I think the goal here is no matter who gets contacted, they they know who to point them to. Right, and we're working really hard on that right now, Brian. We're working on core organization is one of our key okay. points that this organization is trying to pull together. We're having regular meetings, just so to help you understand, Brian, that we are trying to solve that problem. So I, I get your point, and we're working towards that. And then, of course, the main thing is when there is a hand up, oh, I'm going to introduce you to the chamber, Talk and then all of a sudden, how do you make sure that there's a follow-up? Hey, did you talk to that person? Oh, I didn't. You know, yeah, yes, you need some up to talk about that. So, so I would say with Aztec, um, you know, it, it's a small organization, it's a small entity, and, and we would have to work as a team because, like in Farmington, what they've done a really good job at is they have Warren Unsinker, and he's specifically responsible for economic development, and then they have a whole other department that's responsible for, biz, for marketing, and they all have another department that's involved in planning and zoning, and so they have a, a huge department. We don't have that luxury, but your points are all well taken. I think what we have to do on our end is communicate it better on the website. Um, and we, we, we're gonna have to communicate, if somebody does contact the visitor center, that they relay that information to the appropriate yeah, department um, so that time doesn't become an issue and doesn't become a detriment. Um, but unfortunately, that's just you know some of the, the things that we work with. And I, I appreciate the comments about uh, me knowing everything. I just fake it till I make it. I think <laughs> that's all that is, so. Yeah, till next week. Yeah. I, think, I think what was referenced the most important part is to, to develop that process because they're going to hit the tourist department. They may actually do it at the utility department too, you know, because that's where you pay business license things. So that, that may be where they go over. So the key to it is developing the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and part of that process is, is once a contact's made, you, you, your core organization communication gets it to all departments in the city that, that is affected, and they know that they have to report that. and somebody has to call that person back before the day's out. Right. Things of that nature, you right. know, you, you gotta have a process in place that follows through with that, and everybody accountable to it. And, and I, because the one thing I do know in working with Steven so much, we could keep put things in his department because that's where they belong, but there's only so much staff in place, you know, and so if we don't have it streamlined and, and functional that's, that's smooth, when you overdo some, you don't get the results you want. Right. You know, when you overload what's capable of being done. So I think that's going to be a key element is developing a good process. Yeah, and also looking back to Farmington, when Tanya Stinson was really started developing the, the work around Jolter Journey, Journey, she had um, over 500 citizens, residents in the city, take what was it called, the customer service program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the things they discovered was even at the high school, new parents come in and they're talking to somebody right there at the counter and then sometimes the school is the very first person that meets somebody coming into a community if they were aware oh you're interested in moving here or you're interested in starting a business let me point you in the right direction so the customer service all of the, the administration at the high school took it because it was important for them to be ambassadors to what's going on to your point about you know does everybody know what's going on yes just Jim. one more point Jim in, in I hope Stephen would back me up on this, is that as a new city manager, I am pushing service, service, service. We're service oriented, that's what we are. And, and I'm trying to get that message across. You know, but there are barriers in a big, what to me is a big organization. 
and I would want to be accountable for that. So if you're hearing that in the community that we're not being the responsive ones, then I want that to come right to me. Okay. I, want, I want to make sure that I, I can get on top of that to the best of my ability. Instead of, sometimes we fall into that, it's a hard place to do business, or I didn't get the contact, therefore they're not, they're not on top of it. Yes. And that then the becomes buck stops your brand. Here. Right, yeah, the buck stops here. So it's heard in the community. I want to know about it, right? Okay. So we can start working on it. Well, it's hard to get a hold of that Aztec high school principal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Brandon, is he there? Oh, well. Says the new guy who just got here. <laughs> the former new guy. <laughs> Don't you have a formal evaluation coming up? <laughs> so, um, so anyway, what I love about this is just we're only talking about one of the best practices, but it, but it facilitates conversation around things. Let's go to another one. Looking up there, does anything else a score that that looks a little light or um, anything that's standing out to you? Can I'll read the detail more to you, but anything just by the. The description of well, what five, five is obviously the lowest one there, Jim. I hate to correct your, your maths, but no, six is. Yes, six. And that's six what we just worked on. It yeah. It's just the optical illusion. Oh, is it from what angle I'm looking at? It looks yeah. like that when you said it too. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. I jumped yeah, out. Yeah. I, <coughs> I stand palm palm. I stand correct. <laughs> Technical. We have uh, palms coming. Hang on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ben. Yes, sir. Um, Thank you. Okay. So yes. Close though. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So <coughs> what else sounds interesting to talk about right now? We have the, the people in the room. So we've got identify and power local champions, which we sort of already have right here. So that that was why that score was higher. What's the insured value capture? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, value capture is an interesting one. You want to go there for a second? You were gonna ask about thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me read yeah. and define what that one is, because that is really important, especially when you want to go back to your mayor and say, we need more money, because look what we've done, right? Mm -hmm. um, so 13, ensure value capture. Ensuring comprehensive value capture for communities is critically important. It is advantageous to capture visitors spending throughout the value chain to multiply to multiply benefits for the community. Communities must consider the full scope of the value opportunities within an outdoor recreation economy, including hotels, restaurants, and other services <coughs> and support. What that really means is how can we partner with everybody in the community to kind of give us some parameters and some data back on what's happening. So if something happens at Aztec Motocross, maybe you go talk to that restaurant. Yeah, we had a bump of 20% this weekend or whatever the case might be. Typically, the question's never asked of anybody in the community to share any kind of data they might have related to that. But if you have a system in place, going back to that process, John was talking, to be able to, to really start identifying what's happening, then you can, even if it's not hard science, at least start showing some trends. And so that's what Ensure Value Capture is. And the more that you can pull that data together, then you can go back to Lodger's tax if you have that money or, or whatever the case might be and say, hey, look at the results we, gave, we got from this thing that we did, whatever that is. And that's why we want more money or more effort or time or whatever. It's proving that it's working out. So that's what Ensure Value Capture is. Anybody thoughts on how you might better do that in this community? If you need to hire more people, Stephen. <laughs> well, again, I think that's one of the things that we're focused on is trying to find a way to accommodate people to stay here. That's how you capture more value, is have them stay here. Because then they'll find somewhere to eat, they'll go to the convenience stores, they'll fuel up, they'll do the things necessary. Now, how you track that will depend on what we end up doing that, that creates that. Uh, Which goes to number nine, the, next, the second lowest, 1.3, is create the brand. Yeah, and, and that is kind of what Marianne and I do on our, for our side job, <laughs> but it is. And, and a brand is supposed to be what is the perception that this community has in other people's minds when they look at what, what am I going to get out of this community, whether I live here, work here, play here, or stay here. And so it really defining like the Jolter Journey brand, which is all about energizing the life journeys of outdoor lovers and active families, that is the Farmington brand. Okay, can I go back to the insurance of the value yes. capture? So, in our first year of motocross out there, we had the QR codes at our, our motel here. Okay. And we were, we were really getting a great feedback on that because that's one that's really easy to see if we're, if we're capturing people staying and it. It was great. Now that's since changed with the change of ownership up there, but that, that really worked for us. And I was just in this conversation, we were standing out at motocross today talking about it, 
and the operator out there was telling me how the um, on the hill there that's owned by the Sand Hills, what is the, the name of the road, road, the road Runner, is like the number one place that he hears that his people are stopping. And he wanted to stop by and try to talk to the Sand Hills and see if he could get something like that going. So it's, it's kind of got to go both ways. We, we've got to develop some way to track it, but we've also got to create the, a relationship with the, right. the operator so that they will give us the information. They're, they're comfortable with us looking into the And that's why I think it's one of the best practices because it starts getting, oh, top of mind, like, oh, we really should be addressing this now. How do we do this? Yeah. And the low-hanging fruit would be just data that's already available. So nobody's having to compile anything that they aren't already doing. And it just may be, hey, what are you doing? Oh, we track this, we track that, whatever the case might be. And then somehow have a way of, of assimilating that and, and yeah. you know, scoring it in whatever way. Um, other thoughts on, on how might you do that? I mean, state parks, you know visitors, right? So there's another number where or the state park is, oh, this indicator shows it's up or down or flat or whatever the case might be there. Um, there you go, is once we get hopefully efficient enough on uh, reviewing gross receipts tax dollars, that's a longer time frame period, but you can still see trends that are affected by events in certain months, yeah. different things that may transpire, or whatever you do overall. So I think that's, that's a really important thing for finance City of Aztec Finance to, to stay tuned into and, and disseminate that information again, because information is no good if it's not usable, right. if it's not used by people and not presented to people. So I think it, it's <coughs> important to take, because that's really the number one metric that allows the commission to, to make expenditures, right. is you know, we're generating additional income, we're bringing it in, we're seeing what's happening. So okay, yeah, we spent $20,000 on a feasibility study, but now over the course of five years, that brought in X, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in additional night stays and, and expenditures while they were here. Yeah. We were able to track it once that opened. Obviously, you'll be able to see it real quick with the large tax fund, things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, so, and so I other, think that that's just the important part is to... And there's other, like, real-time online um, research that you can do related to, like, trails. Um, what is it? All Trails now has an app that, that you can go out and actually put in your city and it will tell you how many people use the All Trails app in your city over a period of time. And it is very cool. It's real time and it's neat to see. Now, they only have about 18% of the bike riders use their app. So you can almost say, well, 50, 60% are using Strava that doesn't have the same app, but you could say, well, if it's only 18% and we had 500 people, then there must we'll be another group. Or whatever, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so it's just another parameter. Or Stephen could say, you know, we had two people call last month about bringing businesses here, related outdoor recreation, and then the next month there were five. So you can, you know, so those numbers can just be monitored in ways that start sh showing you that you're making progress. And, and you can always do <coughs> programs a little farther down the road, but programs where you can de devise a barcode or something that uh, people could go to any individual businesses and the businesses work together. And if you scan the barcode there, if they scan enough barcodes, you know, they're entered in a drawing or something, or, you know, but, but get them to go to different so stores in the facility, then that gives you the feedback of these people were at this event, there was, you know, they were given this information and they went to all these places because you have the barcode information showing what transpired. Yeah, and it used to be QR codes weren't used, but now they are. Come back, yeah. You know, they were almost a dying thing and they re the COVID had a resurgence of your menu or whatever. But it might be something where you could track, hey, click this and let us know where you're from or whatever. You just start, you could be creating Or you could search the event and, you know, that event's there and you, you see how many people clicked at different How many did you bring? How long did you stay? Yeah, did all, you tell us how much you spent? You know, who knows? We all have smartphones on us though that it costs money, but marketing tools where you can do like geofencing so you can capture that somebody was in an event and actually if they use an app while they're there, it will like track them Perfect. around and so it won't tell you exactly what store, but it will give you indications. So there's like software now yeah. that it's crazy. So it's probably a little bit down the road, but it's yeah. something to really consider once we start creating some, some Yeah, and function. I think why it's one of the best practices because now it's hey, this is something we should be paying attention to. So at least brings it to you that, hey, how do we solve this within the resources and whatever we have within this community to ensure value capture, whatever the case would be. Let's do one more and we'll call it quits. What, uh, what's another one that is of interest to people? Um, Unify behind consent messaging on the benefits of outdoor recreation. Yeah, number three is one that I, I like. Um, yeah, the message, well, there, that's a good point. If you want to go to number two, we can go there. And sure. it's interesting 
Um, what what is your preference? You want to do two? Sure. Okay. Because two. Let me read you again the definition of it, and I think it. Oh, it's on my computer here. Hang on a second. Yeah, it was all off. Yeah, I thought it was just my. Yeah, should be great for you. For meetings, how do you think we get through the day? I don't have it. It's this page got lost, so I start with 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 number. Isn't that kind of the same thing as branding? No, no, it it is different. Branding is creating a perception in people's minds. What number two is is that everybody is saying the same thing. So in this particular case, um, and I, I'm sorry. What two is is making sure everybody in the community understands the benefits of outdoor recreation. I don't know if everybody truly does understand that in your community right now, about how important it is for health and wellness, how important it is, that's what it, it's all about. Is And I think it gives you a starting point to start outbounding content, like Catherine was talking about the Outdoor Recreation Youth Mentoring Program and the Mountain Biking um, um, Pro Maintenance Program over there. Does everybody in the community know that? Probably not. I was there for 15 years before I knew where the trailhead was for the alien. Yeah, and you, there you go. I mean, just simple things like that. So there's this constant flow of making sure people understand the benefits of, of outdoor recreation economy, that it brings in new visitors, it brings in new residents, and all sorts of things. And so that's what that's all about. Yes? So what do we think is our, our, our big you know, push in outdoors? Is it the ruins? You know, is it walking the ruins? Is it our river trails? Is well, it, I, I think it's is gonna... it fishing at the quality waters? Is it you know, a combination? You know? Exactly a combination in this area of all those. Right now, our biggest draw, and I go back and John brought it up, is our motocross track out there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the people that that generates, and I, I don't know how many people have been out there during a race. Oh, how many people have been there? See, and that's the problem, because I go out there every race, and it's packed. John brought up the thing, we're working hard to try to get an RV park out there, and that's gonna benefit all the way to Navajo Dam here too, but that's the problem that we're having. People out now. Right, so, so and you, yes. So, so real quick, and try to tie a little bit back to the, the branding. Um, who has Instagram here? So does what? Instagram? No. So on Instagram, City of Aztec has a tagline called Explore Aztec. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and, and again, I, I mean, good, bad, or indifferent, that's, you know, it, it may not be good, but that's what the City of Aztec is trying to promote and to try to explore the area, try to get the walkability, try to get out to the motocross. Now, maybe City of Aztec has to look at that to see if we need to make changes on that. Is that internal messaging or for tourism or both? It's, it's primarily for tourism. Yeah. Is the link to that Instagram on the City of Aztec webpage? I think it is. Mm -hmm. Has it? Yeah, I, I, think I so. just haven't looked for it. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things that are being changed, though. I think that there's been some controversy that right now Aztec is looking about changing that tagline. Yeah, and, and I would think it's less of a tagline and just more of a, I don't know, statement? Jump yeah, to journey. Because yeah. yeah. there's visit Gallup. There's explore grants, so it's not a differentiator. No. You're basically saying, "Hey, consider us with everybody else." Yeah. So it's almost just keeping you on par. Now, going back to the vision statement, if this community, through its brand, eventually was known as it really takes care of its outdoor recreation businesses, it really is a place where outdoor recreation is pursued heavily, and it's a place where they they really spend a lot of money building infrastructure. That then becomes the brand. That's the perception people outside looking in go, wow, that's the place I'm gonna move my business to or I'm gonna live because this community's behind outdoor recreation. That becomes the general positioning of a future brand, actually. Yes, Jeff. Kind of to Brian's point, though, it is, will always be connected to Aztec Ruins because it's on every Rand Valley map. There is, it's a national heritage site. It's not gonna go away. Now, in my opinion, it's not the thing that keeps you here, right? You come and unless you're into it, it's, it's a half hour to a half a day kind of thing, unless you're into archeology span and you're gonna spend three days going through the whole thing, studying every arrowhead that's in the cases out there, right? So that's where we've gotta grow outside of that. It's the star on top of the tree, but we right. need a lot more. Yeah, because you can bottom. spend time going to the arches, Yeah, right? You yeah. got 300 of them out there, whatever, right? That's, right. A, that's a day or two or a week. You got the river, so you've got that as well. So that you start, you and then um, with uh, these guys here at Aztec Adventures, you got, reasons coming for races or just to ride the trails, which are phenomenal. You know, so you start having lots of things that you can offer up so people can come no matter what their interests are and stay for multiple days because they're having great outdoor recreation experiences. 
Absolutely. And on the other side would be coming because they can start a business and they can be the next Jack's Plastic Welder. So number two sounds to me like it's more of a kind of like a secondary vision or mission statement that would tie into like specifically outdoor recreation separate from like say the, the city's vision or mission statement correct that just kind of nails in like a little bit closer and you could probably look at like the outdoor rec division for the state or something like that to kind of echo off of something that they're doing uh to kind of have that unity um and i mean it's, especially if they're going to be a driver in, in funding or things like that for for some of this development yeah, yeah. Cool. and and they've got a few legs of their stools about diversity, equity, inclusion, um, building the infrastructure, getting businesses off the ground. So basically, what we're talking about here aligns with, and I, I am an advisory board member to the Outdoor Recreation Division since it's open, and and that is a great resource for the state of New Mexico and for communities. Yes, John. And I think that it's kind of a two-way. It's an in and out. Part of it is is we got to create that message. We got to create that vision. We got to create that brand. Whatever it is. But then we need to disseminate it to the citizens. Yeah, that's the, the integration. The that's the yeah. educating everybody. Yeah, that's why I think Tanya's done a good job yeah. with Joe Journey. A lot of people are now understand that more so than originally when you just threw a tagline out. Yes. I'd say it starts right here. What's that? We got twenty people right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And people listening. listening. You guys are our our, our shotgun, our feelers, our, our points of contact. I'm so you are the, the original evangelist ambassadors for this this outdoor recreation initiative right now. And all of you have friends and family and so it, it grows from there. He didn't have any friends. No. <laughs> I'll be your friend. My mom does. My mom is great. So I think that's where we're going to end tonight on these three. But you can see how this is a powerful tool. And as we move forward, hopefully that there is a group of you that will continue convening to discuss this and work on what is that action plan and that we want to assist them in that process. But I think you see the direction, how powerful this can be as you begin trying to figure out what are the next things we want to do and, and what priorities do we want to focus on. Because there's 15, but any one, if you move the needle a little bit, like just today we were talking about uh, point of contact number six, let's say that's up to a three, divide that by the 15, 2.13 is now up to like 2.5. So you've increased your number a little bit as you strive to be five on all of them. Okay. Any final thoughts as we finish up and uh, beat the yeah, storm? Just want to mention about the motocross races. We starting in March. We've got bike races uh, happening all over the place. Um, we've got the Car Canyon out there. I believe our museum's going to be open for spring break. So we've got a lot of things out there, and they are all on our uh, our Aztec website under tourism. Yeah. Our list of things. And it is exciting to see. It really is. And then I think, as you guys mentioned, coming together is the beginning of how do we make this happen and make this a priority. And that's what number three is. That's why I think it's so important. <laughs> Rather than making outdoor recreation a nicety, it's a must-have. That's what this community is all about. Or one of the things the community is all about. It's not replacing things. It's just adding on to what you already have. Okay? Mm -hmm. So going to the last slide is next time... Oh, it disappeared. Anyway, the next, I, I hit the wrong button. Yeah, Never mind, you don't have to get up, that's sure. right. So we have been meeting once a month on a Wednesday from six to seven, seven thirty or so forth. Um, I guess the question is, do we want a recurring date so people can put it on their calendar because people have been asking that. Can it be something that every month I know it's happening? So is there a particular time? Wednesday has been what we've been meeting and I think sometimes that's difficult for you to make the Wednesday, is that right? No? Me? No. Every night is difficult for me. No, no, no. it's not difficult. Okay. Yeah. So, um, um, anyway, does the Wednesday still work? And Wednesday. what Wednesday of the month is this? Or what, you know, like the third or the, what's this that? Is the first this is the first. One. The first. This is the first. Yeah, the thirds are always hard. It's like every meeting's the third week of. Yeah. So every month's a third. <laughs> but nobody owns the first Wednesday of the month? First Wednesday is fine. Okay. All right. Why don't we go with that? So, so real quick, I just want to say thank you all for coming. That's a big aspect. If if we had a perfect score, we obviously wouldn't be here now soliciting your input. So I appreciate that. I know it's your evening. I know you could be doing other stuff. But uh, just I want to say sincerely, I think this is what's going to make this move forward. Your input, your guidance. Um, we'll take that. We'll run with it. 
and you know it could be just me and Jeff and Jim, and that would make for a, uh, one type of meeting and the mayor. So, but you guys are really instrumental uh, going forward. Good, bad, or indifferent doesn't matter if it's uh, critical or not. That's how we move the needle forward. Yeah, and any input about you know as you see this unfold, what do you think? Is this are we moving in the right direction? Because we're here to support your guys. And you just want to make sure that this makes sense and that you can see the progress that, that, we're, that we're into on. Yes? Maybe it would be helpful, and I've, I've mentioned this to Ralph from uh, one of the bike shops in Farmington, but if we could each try to find somebody else to reach out to and invite them to come to these yeah. meetings, that maybe we can get other experiences in. And that, uh, again, you are the ambassadors. You are the people that can go out there and invite another. That's a great idea. Thank you. And we'll keep building the list. It's sort of an inverted pyramid. You know, this is how many we have now. It would be great a year from now that we had that. Yes? Yeah, I know Will Ann from the tourism, um, the Aztec Visitor Center, was interested in joining these meetings. So I directed her, like, I should let her know about this group. But I don't know if she's on the list or yeah, how we make that connection. But well, I so think yeah, yeah, we know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> and if any of you have. She's in Alaska right now. Oh, okay. Okay. The truth, but we'll, we'll, we'll get the info to her. If we have yeah. input outside of this, where do we send it? To you? Well, Stephen, right, right now. Questions or input, yeah, to you? Okay. Well, and yeah, I get a lot of those phone calls. Oh, oh, I direct directors straight to the city manager, Stephen. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Then, available as well. That's okay. where it should go. Janice? Oh, I was just going to add also maybe Tanya, because, I mean, she's in, you know, works in Farmington, but she lives in that oh, stack, and she might be a real good resource for this group because of all the great outdoor recreation branding that, you know, that's, she kind of led there that's with you. Right? And again, there is the Outdoor Recreation Industry Initiative, which is the whole county-wide initiative to try to float all the kayaks, if you will, to have everybody kind of bolster their outdoor recreation economy. Yes. One thing I do almost daily, and I recommend it, is that we take our outdoor out, outdoor recreation and we practice it personally daily because we're the examples that we're setting for the rest of the community. Yeah. So if we're out there and we're home, we're working the trails, even if we're not like blazing new trails, if we're out there like just being using the trails, well. Other community members see that, and maybe they're inspired to give it a try. Yeah, yeah like Walmart will have this. Ask me about outdoor recreation. Yeah, I'll sure. answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you from experience watching the North Main since it's been completed, how many more people are going and parking down there and starting to walk the trail. That bridge has been there for quite some time, mm -hmm. but the activity has picked up. I have a feeling this spring, when the weather clears and people get tired of the winter, you know, and and uh, they aren't too afraid of that river that will be running. You know, I think we'll see a lot more activity, and that's that's what builds on it is, is people experiencing it, just like you're saying, is, is you know, getting that experience in it and seeing what's there. And and maybe that's one of the things that we do is, is we put a sign or two up in areas that will have people that participate and do that and say, hey, if you if you love the outdoors and want to help it grow, come to the meetings. Yeah, you know, right. and, and put a sign up so they see you know, in places where they participate. Or use meetup online, where you can have, you know, meetup is hiking or walking, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but just, if we're going to have a set time for the meetings, you know, just, you know, let them know. Yeah, yeah. it'll be storefronts, you can put a flyer. Yeah. <laughs> and did you have one last thing you wanted to add, Wade, or was that a hand, or was that just a... Oh, we got me to think, and, uh, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I think that's it. Thank you very much. And we will capture the information. We will pull that together. And uh, we'll figure out what we're going to talk about next time. But I, I love the progress. It's really starting to take shape. So.